Welcome everybody hey. to the Poets Tree. I, I take your shoes off and let your toes sink down to the roots. <laughs> all are welcome here, poets, songwriters, lovers of all work. If you feel it, pick up what we're putting down. Come on! I what, I what, I what? I pad, I poet, I paradox, you know it. I got Wi-Fi fingers, so my wisdom's uploaded. I what, I what, I what? Why are you playing hard to get with the infinite? I what, I what, I what? Welcome, 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 everybody to the Poets Tree. All my barks out there, thank you so much for coming back into uh, this virtual garden and, and just chilling with us and sharing your words, sharing our laughter, sharing our just passion for, for poetry and storytelling and what have you. You could have been anywhere in the world, like I say every week, but you decided to come here with us. And for that, we're eternally grateful. My last guest uh, last week, Jerry Quickly, mentioned about winning the lottery, uh, that he won a, a local lottery by being born in the time uh, of hip hop emerging. And I feel like I won the lottery because I came up in poetry at a time where um, you could still get into the poets, <laughs> the poetry lounge, where you could uh, really talk face to face with people who were just blazing a trail. And I got to know this next young gentleman um, through that so much so anytime that I had a big show, uh, I, I invited him down. Let me tell you a little bit about him, then I'll tell you why I love this guy so much. NQ is an award-winning poet, best-selling author, and multi-platinum songwriter. His groundbreaking achievements include being named Oprah, like the Oprah, super soul hundred list of the world's most influential thought leaders, being the first spoken word artist to perform with Cirque du Soleil, and being featured on A&E, ESPN, and HBO Death Poetry Jam. He's inspired audiences around the world through his live performances and storytelling workshops. Many of his recent poetry videos have gone viral with over a hundred million with the M, views combined and he recently released his book inquire within as a songwriter nq's hit single love you like a love song by selena gomez went multi-platinum winning him a bmi award he has written with uh the renowned artists including aloe black this is a love aloe uh miley cyrus mike po posner and foster the people his songs have accumulated over 1 billion views that's billion with the b on youtube alone ultimately nq writes to entertain inspire and challenges is his audience to look deeper into the human experience and ask questions about themselves, their environment, and the world at large. Uh, and I love this dude so much. I remember uh, driving down to LA just to pick him up from San Diego to drive him back to, to San Diego to do the show and then drive him back. That's how much I wanted this brother in one of my shows. Please give it up for NQ, everybody. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? That what a great, what a great intro and what a great memory. Yeah, That's true commitment. <laughs> yeah, I remember, uh, and and I watched uh, the majority of your special because I had kids, I had to get to bed, <laughs> but um. Uh, you talked about that back room that you used to live in, and I was like, oh shit, I've been in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, you were there for a minute, right? I was there for more than a minute. I thought <laughs> I was going to be there for maybe six months. Uh -huh. And then six months turned into six years. Ah, and man. Uh, actually, in retrospect, and you were there, so you know, mm -hmm. you could almost put your arms out like this and, and touch both walls. Yeah. Um, but it was a blessing because yeah. when I was still figuring out how to monetize my art form without losing my artistic integrity, basically, mm. uh, that was a, a shelter from the storm. Yeah. It wasn't too much money and I could, you know, get by on rent every month. And, um, you know, so I have nothing but fond memories from that place and that time in my life. And you were building an empire from that small room. Like, you imagine that. That's that's amazing, man. I would not call it an empire, but that's it's very kind of you. I, I would call it an insane asylum. <laughs> you know, I was sitting there when a room is so small, your energy and thoughts and emotions, they just bounce there's mm. nowhere for them to go. They echo back onto you. Mm. But in a weird way, I think that fueled my obsession with writing. And I got a lot of great material out of that time. 
Mm. Speaking of writing, will you bless us with one of your pieces, man? Yeah, can I do a new one? Sure, you can do whatever okay. you want, man. Brand new one. Oh, hey, exclusive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have to find it, actually. <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, did you just open your laptop? No, I opened uh, my Oh, cell phone. your phone. So when you did that, it looked like uh, your face just uh, glowed from the light, and it looked like uh, Pulp Fiction when you opened up that briefcase, briefcase right, exactly. and something special was about to happen. You know there's something special in there. That's what, how I feel right now. When you opened up your phone and the light came on your face. That's very kind. Yeah, you know what <laughs> it is, man, is that it is special, but all mm -hmm. art is because the creativity isn't from us, it's through us. Yeah, so definitely. The glow comes out when you open up the uh, metaphorical suitcase. <laughs> All right. The birds aren't singing to win a Grammy. They're not trying to go platinum through their marketing or planning. They're just jamming. I listen without even understanding. The truth without agenda is authentically astounding. It makes me think of cheetahs. They don't run for our approval. They don't judge their spots or contemplate some laser hair removal. It makes me think of wolves. They don't howl for validation. They don't have to get the perfect pick to post on their vacation. It makes me think of eagles. They're not soaring to impress me. Although once I saw a dolphin backflip over a jet ski, my point is neither one of them would sell me sh on Etsy and I doubt a porcupine would ever try to come off sexy. <laughs> Humans are the only animals pretending to be something that they're not. Mm. Why are we ashamed of what we've got? We should strut chest out, head up, Let's be proud of ourselves for once. Isn't it exhausting sticking out your butt or sucking in your gut? And for what? It's a waste of energy. I've given up in this moment. I'm enough. I'm dismantling my image. We are perfect in our flaws. Birds don't care whether we listen. They don't wait for our applause. I have built a lovely prison, but I live behind the walls. So if love is my religion, I'll escape when freedom calls. You have to be willing not to be liked in order to be loved. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's your representative they're thinking of. But to truly be yourself, you have to let go of what was. The past is like an echo. It's repeating just because we are many people in our lives. So I'm not one to judge. But if they love one part of you, it's limited to what that does. I want your whole soul. I have no goal. Show me the unseen stuff. Don't invite me over only after you have cleaned up. Perfect makes me want to kick my feet up. No one's living in a catalog Ikea dreamed up. Have you ever seen a lion chase a thousand zebras? Have you ever seen a turtle hide inside his shell? A caterpillar doesn't know that she'll become the butterfly. So if you go to heaven, are you still aware of hell? Man, this human sh is wild. I would rather be a panda or an ant or a parrot or a slithering salamander or a whale with a tail that's the size of a freighter so that I could swim the oceans from equator to equator. I would rather be an alligator just to have a killer grin. I wouldn't care what anybody thought about me then. I would rather be the wind so that I would never end and never begin. Sometimes I feel so trapped in my skin. I would rather be a beetle or a beagle or a seagull flying high above the clouds, far from cities filled with people, people, people. Sometimes I really hate people, myself included. We're all so freaking stupid. None of us know what we're doing. And yet we seem to think whatever we do is so important that we claim an idea and we kill each other for it. Mm. I'd rather be the forest. I wouldn't judge the seasons. 
If all my leaves fell, I wouldn't analyze the reasons. I'd bend to every storm, but cling to every root. I'd be a thousand years old and still be in my youth. Amazing, man. That's one of my new favorites from you, man. Um, I'm going to make that official. Uh, that's, that's beautiful, brother. That's beautiful. Thank you, um, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, my first question for you is, you do so much. When people ask, what do you do? What do you say? Especially in, in, in Hollywood land there. Yeah, I think it depends upon what uh, environment I'm in and mm -hmm. what conversation I want to have. Ah, uh, uh, you guard that, huh? Yeah, I mean, if I say I'm a poet mm -hmm. in certain environments, no one will care. Mm -hmm. And if I say I'm a poet in other environments, it becomes the center of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So it depends, mm -hmm. you know? Do I want to be the center of the conversation? Do I want to be ignored? You know, uh, the ego is a, a tricky thing. You know, yeah. sometimes I'll say I'm a poet and no one cares. And I go, what? Like they don't, they don't know yeah. what this really is. Not even me, just the genre, you know? Mm. And then sometimes I say I'm a poet and they're like, what do you mean? Can you make a living? And you yeah. figured out how to, and then I'm like, oh, this is too much too. So I think it depends upon what convo I want to have and where I am. What are some of the uh, alternate uh, answers? If I say I'm a songwriter, I can usually uh, transition to something different pretty quickly. Mm. Because people think they know what a songwriter does. Mm. And so even if they want to know who you've written for, I can say, oh, a bunch of different people. But what, what is it that you do again? And then I can just go. But mm. they'll always go back to poetry if they're interested because it's, it's an anomaly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we I've actually had a lot of conversations with uh, some of the poets that we've had on before about people not still to this day. It's been around uh, since even before written language, you know, poetry. And still we have uh, a, so many different ideas of what it is, you know, and I was actually noticing on your bio. Uh, I didn't know I didn't see any of your slam credits and I know that you've done well also in slam. Is that is that just because of space? Is it because, you know, you feel like people don't really care about slam in the outer world? You know, uh, what do you think it is? Well, uh, like, for example, it says national poetry, I think slam champion or national award winning poet or something. First of all, I've had 190 bios. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I, I completely tune out when you're listening. So no, I, but I would say that like people don't, it's not necessarily something that people know unless they're in the community. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, over the years, the more things you do, your bio changes that, you know, you have highlights at a certain point in your life that at another point in your life, they don't make, they don't make it. Mm. But that was certainly a highlight in my life. Mm. You know, winning the National Poetry Slam Championships with the team that we had was, yeah. was extremely special. Um, you know, look, I have uh, amazing memories of slam in general not only because of the community and the friendships but because of the competition mm -hmm. and yet i also feel that as much as it's given to me at a certain point it started taking away yeah because when you're writing for the scores it changes your relationship with your truth yeah so i think it's necessary for people to go into slam if they want to be a well-rounded poet but it's also necessary to know when to get out you know, I've talked to so many people and uh, about that exact same subject, and I feel the exact same way. It's 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 good for the like a training ground, and then yeah, you got to be out in order for your creativity to fly. Plus, you're you're kind of um, performing to the same type of audience, and that's and that's just a small subset of the world, you know. Right. Yeah. So, um, and, and speaking of performing uh, to audiences, 
uh, one of the things also I noticed, and you played it off so well, like uh, during your, and everybody needs to see NQ's uh, uh, one man show uh, live at the Ace Theater, right? And it's on um, Amazon. Amazon Prime. Yes, sir. I was so proud when I saw that. I was like, my boy done did it. Uh, <laughs> you had said something and then you're like, oh, I, I thought I thought that it would get more than a scattered applause. You know, uh, you had said a joke, just like a little offhand a joke and and um i think it was about uh everybody getting laid <laughs> but i don't by think that bit really worked that night you know <laughs> no how do you uh, so one of the things that i i like to do with with this the show is really just give people uh, uh some guidance from people who have gone before them that could help them out so what are some of the things that you do since you've performed so much when things aren't going as expected while on stage like in in the moment is are there some go-to's that you do or you just kind of uh announce the elephant in the room and keep it moving or what do you what do you uh try to I do? mean I definitely have many conscious and unconscious strategies to keep the energy moving mm. um and you learn these skills or these tools over the years of performing it's like you can train as much as you want you know uh but you're not really going to know how you fight until you get into the ring mm, yeah you know, it definitely changes things so you can practice as much as you want when you're at home but it's only when you're really on stage interacting with your work and with the audience uh it ex just accelerates your learning curve so much but then you learn all these tools and then at a certain point these tools almost become crutches because there's a mm. difference between using the tools to connect and then the tools using you yeah. because you need validation yeah, you know that particular show, which I'm super proud of. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the live at the Ace Theater. Everybody definitely go out and watch it. it. It's an awesome show, and it was captured so beautifully. And it was such a special night, man. Like Chris Martin from Coldplay, the lead singer, was like three rows in, and I'm a big fan of Coldplay. So just to crazy. See him watching me do something that came out of my mind and heart. You know, it was just a very special experience. But most comedians or uh, performers, if they were mm -hmm. going to do a big special, they would have the opportunity to tour around mm -hmm. pre pandemic, and they would do, you know, 25 or 30 rooms that were comparable to mm -hmm. that size of a room. Mm -hmm. And then they would film it on the 31st. Right. Show. Me, we put that whole thing together on our own, we didn't sell it to Amazon Prime first. Mm. So I was doing the show in rooms of 150 people. Mm. Now there's a huge difference between doing an hour and 20 minutes in front of 150 people mm. and 1700 people. Yeah. And you only know when you're on stage. So yeah. there were like certain jokes or ways that I pushed and pulled my energy that I learned from that experience worked and didn't work. Um, and the next time I got up in front of that size of a room and had uh, that long to do, it was just so much more comfortable. But as I said, you only learn how to swim when you're thrown in the water. It definitely, definitely. And you did some things that like, I, I, I've i never seen a performer do uh, in, in a performance setting. Like if you were giving a seminar or whatever, then that's different. But like uh, giving people a massage, which wouldn't fly now in COVID, but yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, all these different uh, standing up, stretching and, and all these things that, you know, if you see com comic performances or even some of the poetic performances, um, it was actually, it was an endearing thing to do, but it's also a very brave thing to do to, to have you trust the audience to do it and for the audience to trust you uh, in, in doing it in, in itself. Um, what was the ultimate goal in, in that opening for you? Well, as you said, it, it's not appropriate anymore. Even when we probably come back, you won't have yeah. people touching each other in the same way. But when, a, when an audience comes into a space, there are a bunch of different like islands almost. Mm. You know, and when you have them stretch together, do an activity, you know, uh, wake up the cells in their body or turn and massage each other or whatever, they become a family, an energetic family immediately because they've done something that has gotten them outside of their comfort zone together. Mm. And then when they sit down, they're more open to having the experience together rather mm. than separately. And uh, I think that 
that's the best thing to do with an audience is to uh, bond to them in a way where, uh, yeah, it just changes the way that they experience the performance. Definitely, definitely. And even even as a viewer uh, digitally, like it changed, it definitely changed it for me. Um, someone is asking online, uh, what was the name of the first one that you, the, the poem that you read? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know yet. Yeah. Po uh, titles from poems usually come a lot later when you have to actually give it one, uh, usually. Yeah. Uh, cool. Maybe cool. Bird Song. That's pretty good. Bird Song. I like that. I like that. Um, one more question, and then we'll go into some of our participants' uh, poems. And uh, any of my Barks out there, those are people who, who follow uh, the Poets Tree, the Barks, uh, named by Reggie Gaines. I always want to give cool. him uh, credit. Uh, but... <clears throat> Uh, any of my barks out there who have any questions for NQ, put it in the chat and I'll try to get to as many as we can. Limited amount of time. He has limited amount of time. Man just got married, so he has duties now. Uh, <laughs> so what is, I always like to ask this uh, to, to my artists that come on, what is the best piece of advice that you can recall that you got about art in, it, in and of itself? And God, that's a really hard question. There's mm -hmm. nothing that particularly comes to mind. Um, or one good piece of advice that you try to follow. I could, look, I, I'd say life, my best life advice is follow the path and the path will lead the way. Mm -hmm. You know, people are always they're trying to think, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. My purpose. And it's so big mm. to try to like wrap your hands around your purpose. Yeah. That's hard. But yeah. if you don't know what your purpose is, you know, tell me what your passion is. Yeah. And if you it, passion's a little bit easier, but if mm. you don't know what your passion is, you know, think about what are you enthusiastic about? Yeah. And then if you don't know what that is, think about what you're curious about. Mm. Because curiosity is easy. Purpose is hard. Yeah. But if you pay attention, you can figure out what it is that you're curious about. And then you can follow that breadcrumb trail. And as I said, if you follow the path, the path will lead the way. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, philosophy in your work. Um, is it something that you feel like it just comes naturally? Like this is just how you think? Or is some of it a, a conscious thing? Like I need to write about this subject or this thing is, is uh, really weighing on me and I have to just get it out. Yeah, look, I'm definitely the only person in my audience mm. at the beginning, at least. Mm. You know, I mean, w the piece is for me. And that's why when people, you know, look at it, like sometimes somebody will be like, oh, that piece is a little bit preachy. And I'm like, yeah, I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to remind myself how to live up to my fullest potential. Yeah, to step what? into the power of my best life. And so that's what I'm doing when I'm exploring these pieces. And, uh, and then after that, I just try to give it away so it can have life for someone else in a way that I never imagined. Yeah, uh, Toni Morrison talked about uh, trying to answer questions that she had within herself through her work. Mm -hmm. um, and I also like it, when I'm ever I'm teaching a workshop, I say like, you have to like this poem first or need to hear it, you know, often. Um, Okay, let's go into some of the participants' poems. Right. Uh, and then uh, there's a few more questions uh, coming through. But uh, let's see, who do we got first? We have um, BJ Ram. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that one. Okay, and, perfect. And you can do Marjorie. Here we go. This is Taking the Fall from BJ Ram. And oh, the prompt from last week, if you guys still want to write on it, is uh, Jerry quickly challenged people to write about a time that you wrong that there, there was a wrong that happened, but a time when, uh, or say, write about a wrong that happened, but write it in the perspective of the person that you wronged. Mm. Uh -huh. So it's a kind Very of. Very deep, man. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, here goes, taking the fall. You're my flesh and blood, a mere generation away from me. And yet I feel very distant in time and place. My ashes, swirling specks of soil, sacred no less. 
scattered in the wind and spread that it may find a new shape and purposed by our kith and kin and some yet reborn, unborn. That ill-fated night came and went and perhaps the nightmare still haunts you. Worry not for even a second as it was perhaps the best night to be devoured whole, to be rid of those mortal binds, invisible to the eye, but thicker than the thickest ropes, killing me slowly, eating me alive from the inside out. There's much unclear to you, I realize. As your young self was trying to learn the ropes, I want you to know that I took the fall for everyone's sake, including my own. I hear your silent pleas for forgiveness whispered into your pillow as you toss and turn. Know this always, that I am not the one who was betrayed, but that he chose me as the fall guy. The only regret is not being there for you. Uh, my only regret is not being there for your successes, to cheer you on and vicariously live my dreams through you, to lend a hand to babysit, run errands, or perhaps offer words of encouragement when you feel depressed and you feel those dreaded mortal binds eating at you. Give it up for BJ Ram. Good job, good job, brother. All right, next we got Marjorie Pizzoli. Okay, that was beautiful. Yeah. It's very healing. Yeah. Writing. I told you at the beginning, like, I'm doing these uh, prompts on my podcast as well. Yeah. And it's crazy that we were on the same wavelength. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, uh, it's definitely healing. Um, and something that I think you, you, I think that people don't realize what can come out when they write, you know, just it's things in, deep in their subconscious. If you choose something meaningful, the poem will almost write itself if you give it enough time and space. The problem is, is people don't choose things that are meaningful. Preach. They, they, go, they go to the things that are easy. Mm. But if you actually think of what charges you, like what makes you mad or what makes you sad or what brings you true joy or gratitude or love, I mean, the piece is inside of you. It wants to come out. Yeah. yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Um, Okay, so you have to forgive me because I haven't read this yet because I wanted to be surprised by it in real yeah. time. So if I mess up, that's what it is. But, um, and how do I pronounce this woman's name? Uh, Marjorie Pizzoli. Marjorie Pizzoli. Yes. Don't blame the moon. You blame me for the enticement of beckoned allure for her. Desire to dance on moonlit waters, small, Glassy waves frosted with galaxy glitter sparkles. Beams and pinpoints of light bounced off the cosmic disco ball, shimmered across the water. Whispers of come dance with us filled the air. Gravitational pull cast silver reflections of universal truths and invitation to tango. You might as well blame the stars for your heart scars in the ocean as well. Remember, you are the one who taught her about magic, infinite possibilities, how to dance on top of rainbows, eat cotton candy clouds, make glowworm lanterns, carve dragon fruit into reality, be bold and unrelenting. Fly with broken wings, live life in full 3D color. It is not our fault she wanted to sing with mermaids. I, the man in the moon, has observed your many ways. You too sparkle on still waters, mirror back how you want to be perceived out of nowhere, create turbulence, rogue waves of riptides. How many people have you swept out to sea under the rug? Hmm? You felt betrayed by that night of eight years past. Think about the times. Three fingers pointed back at you. Time to pick up your moon mirror, reflect your reflection, stare down the corridor of endless time, walk through this hall of re-examination, face the self inside of your being, yet you still wonder what life would still be like if I did not hang in the sky like a new dime, if the tide did not change, if she would have come home to enjoy stillness of moments 
Watch her apply her eyeshadow and lipstick perfectly for work. Shit, there's more. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. that's okay. There's a big space. I apologize. A big... <laughs> I did the same thing. Apply point. eyeshadow and lipstick perfectly for work. Discuss if a boy was worth kissing. Talk about everything and nothing. The magic of that night is not the betrayer. I have to ask, who will the blame? Who will the blame the moon? Who will the blame the moon? I think it's probably a typo. Okay. I have to ask, who will blame the moon when you want to sing with mermaids? That's gorgeous. I'm That's sorry gorgeous. that I kind of stumbled. Oh, no, but yeah, that was gorgeous. Great job, Marjorie. And it's funny, she's been uh, submitting stuff to us since we started, and I could see actually her writing getting better and better. So it's, it's just, just amazing. Thank you for letting me read your words. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I have uh, one more from Tim V. Uh, he writes, Another night as I sit and watch the TV and you're focused on that thing and not me. For 60 hours a week, I don't see you. And you sit there for another 20 with your clippers and your glue. I'm concerned. I'm concerned that you have found a new love. A year ago, you helped me rise, but now you've risen above. Building your so-called talent, strengthening your soul, and squeezing me out just so everyone knows feeling cast, dropped, kicked, but I act like we're fine. You made me feel worthless, wasted, no longer worthy of your time. You painted a picture that was so loud as a shot. That, sorry, you painted a picture that was as loud as a shout, and you made sure it came true as they carried me out. Mm. That's powerful. That is powerful. Give us snaps, claps, emojis, anything uh, that you, however you want to express yourself digitally to the poets. Thank you for NQ for, for reading that with me. Uh, wonderful. Let me ask you this. Um, what is something that you wish you knew when you first started poetry? <laughs> it's a funny question because... I mean, I wasn't really in my right mind when I first started, <laughs> you know, so there's, there's things that I wish somebody told me about life, but I would have been too stubborn mm. and knuckleheaded to hear them. Mm. Um, in terms of life, I would wish that I could have heard someone say to me that it's all going to be all right. Mm. You know, faith is a choice. Yeah. And, uh, it's a choice that you have to make every day. Either something is happening to you or it's happening for you. And there are things that happen that there's you know, no way to make sense out of. I mean, life has a lot of pain and a lot of suffering, mm -hmm. um, but that's what allows us to recognize the joy. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was no dichotomy, there would be no comparison point. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's all gonna be all right. You know, that if you just keep showing up and doing your best, um, you know, yeah. Let me ask you this. this uh, I'm gonna get on some hip hop ish real quick. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, when when a lot of poets first started, first of all, a lot of poets migrated from the hip hop world, right? But even even in that, I noticed a lot of poets use these alternative names, you know, like NQ, Black Ice, uh, Poetry, there's tons, right? And now I'm starting to see not so much so. What do you think was the impetus of uh, us starting with these alternate names? And then why do you think it's not as popular? Or maybe I'm wrong, maybe it still is, and I just don't know what the young kids are doing. Well, I mean, Everyone was doing it at that point. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like such an amazing comment. It's just everybody did it because everybody was doing it. Mm. Um, I would say people are doing it less now, but like, you know, what was the impotence of that? Maybe Kendrick Lamar. Mm. You know, well, I thought that too, you know? Yeah, go ahead. Continue. No, that was it. I mean, he was K-Dot and then he decided to go by his real name and there is something about the authenticity of that, but his name is Kendrick Lamar. My name is Adam Schmalholz. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear nothing from Adam Schmalholz. You know, like, 
<laughs> so in Q is in question. And I got it when I was 15 years old and everybody called me Q and it's just mm. something that stuck. So, you know, my wife doesn't call me in Q. My mom doesn't call me in Q, but almost everybody else does, you know? Uh, that's, that's dope. Actually, I just found out last week that uh, Lamar is not his real last name. I think that's his middle name. Oh, really? What's yeah, the, what's he, the I don't forget. It's another like, like a normal last name, but he just liked Kendrick Lamar. So yeah. it has a ring to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he'll do all right. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he's going to be OK. I think he's going to be OK. Um, you know, I started actually comparing that to just us growing up and seeing uh, even in the, the comic book culture, what we grew up like idolizing yeah. and the, the, these people had these other personas that were bigger, stronger, faster, more just took justice into their own hands, took their fate into their own hands. And there's something very sexy and attractive about that. And the sexy is the wrong word, but very, very uh, attractive about being the best version of you. Actually, you have a line in, in one of your poems, uh, something, I forget the, the setup, and then you turn into the super you. Yeah. What is it? I you know what I'm saying? Know. Did you do this pose? Oh, that was a lot. I don't even know. <laughs> right, right, right. It, it was something like that that I used to do at a certain point. Yeah. Right, who for you? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what that's from. But, you know, I will say, uh, based on your point, um, that I think for me, maybe other people have similar experience. Maybe they don't. But for me, when I got into hip hop, it was a source of empowerment. Yeah. It was a place where I had infinite possibility and freedom to express myself, to have a voice, mm. you know, to be heard. And I don't think that I felt that I had that in any other place in my life. Yeah. You know, that's a, in a very different way is a completely different example. But, you know, when you get in your first fight and you actually win, mm -hmm. You know, there's an element of like, you're like, oh, wow, I can do that. And some people get like almost addicted to that feeling. Yeah. Like people use different things to find power and it kind of covers up the things that aren't working in your life. Yeah. And so what's interesting about this superhero character in Q that I created for myself is it started out that in Q was, was Adam and it was just a space for me to create and express my truth. And then at a certain point, NQ and Adam got farther away from each other. Mm -hmm. And I've had to pull them back mm. over the years. And now I, I don't really like see a difference. So NQ really isn't my superhero anymore. Mm. Um, and I mean, that's the spot where we all want to get to, right? Yeah. Where, where what you present and it's kind of like uh, your, your poem right now, what you present and who you really are match up as much as possible. Well, because it's exhausting pretending to be something else. It takes a lot of energy walking around protecting yourself all the time, you know, needing things to go exactly the way that you, you know, and usually that comes from survival stuff from our past that mm -hmm. isn't in reality now. Yeah. It's just stuff that we remember from back then and we're just repeating the same record. Definitely. You know? So we have to allow ourselves to change with the world and with our life. Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, we're going to play a little game in Q. Okay. Let's uh, this is this is something that I was trying to prepare you for, but you're a busy man, so I couldn't prepare you. So you're just going to have to do it on the fly. It's a little game we call Under Pressure. Okay. Uh, so you may need, uh, and everybody out there, all my barks, all the people just tuning in for the first time, you're going to need uh, uh, either your laptop, phone, something to write with, just something to write with. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do, I have a list in my greedy little hands of uh, 75 common sayings. So like um, cry over spilt milk, back to square one, an arm and a leg. And then I have another list of 75 poetic themes. And the goal is in two minutes is to write one line of poetry. It could be a run on sentence if you want or, or however you want to construct it, but you're going to write one line of poetry that's combining these two themes. And uh, unbeknownst to uh, my friend in Q, he has selected two of, uh, he's going to select two of these prompts. So uh, give me two numbers between one and 75, sir. 19 and 21. 19 and 21. So 19 was uh, right off the bat. Okay. 
And 21 is greed as downfall. So you're combining right off the bat. I'm writing it down myself. You're combining right off the bat and greed as downfall. And you just got to write one poetic sentence, like the start of a poem in, in uh, two minutes. Any questions? No? Okay. Right off the bat, once again, and greed as downfall. Ready, set, go. Everybody out there, you do the same thing and submit it in the chat. All right. All right. All right. So, sorry. I was I was uh trying to finish up. Everybody's cheating. Pencils down, pencils down. Just kidding. Uh you want to go first or you want me to go? Go me? Yeah. No, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 fun, but it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> and and it, and I in the same thing with my guests. Like I don't know what you're gonna pick, and I'm trying to give the 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 instructions while trying to low key think in the back of my head what I'm gonna write. But here I go. Right off the bat, I hungered for more. Young black boy starving for what they claimed I never possessed until. To my credit, I realized my soul was platinum, infinite credit. That's it. Yo. That's way doper than mine. <laughs> it actually like says something. Mine is kind of like ridiculous. Man, I've done so many ridiculous ones, brother. Don't. <laughs> you didn't even know this game was coming. No, this is this is <laughs> extremely ridiculous. Go ahead. Okay. I said right off the bat, I'll write off of that. Make sense or make nonsense that sounds like a scat. Bibbidi bee bop bap. <laughs> I guess I'm hitting a wall. I thought I wanted it all, but greed was my downfall. Now I'm in reality. Isn't it easy to see? And I'm happy to be here on poetry. <laughs> oh! Shout out. Hey, that was dope. I like that. Hey, man, you know, you never fail if you just shout out where you are in the yeah. end. Yeah. You know, that's something. We all know is when you battle or you're in a freestyle, you just end it with something. Yeah, right. <laughs> it represents something that's actually happening and people go crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that was the biggest reaction that I've ever given to one of these prompts. So, because <laughs> you said Actually, it reading it back, I kind of like, bibbidi bebop bap. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Here's some from our audience. Um, let me see. Let me pull it over here. I try to, this is from Animating Bunny. Uh, I try to keep all the cookies to myself. And as soon as I put the cookie jar down, someone takes it to the potluck. I, I don't, wait. I don't uh, know how that, that connects with those. No, but... I like that because it confuses me. <laughs> I like to be confused when I listen to poetry because it drops me into a deeper <laughs> level of consciousness. And a potluck is a great way to end any poem. There you go. Uh, this is from BJ Ram. Uh, don't be greedy traveler along the path to success and get rid of and get right to bat. Gather your strengths to hit a home run later. Mm. Dig that. Uh, Danielle uh, says right off the bat and then uh, with the R and then right off the bat with the W. Uh, let me take it. Let me take it make it mine dig it i want it let me hit that home run let me take it make it mine let me right off the bat like right off the bat smack you silly and fall down greed <laughs> all right i'll read one more i walk in the kitchen and before i know it you encircle my feet greedy for a treat one day you'll kill us both i think she's talking about her cat <laughs> I walk in the kitchen and before I know it, you encircle my feet greedy for a treat. One day you'll kill us both. I like that. I like that one too then. All right. Uh, so, man, we only got about 15 minutes left. A uh, few more questions for you. What's a lesson uh, or, or what's a skill that you still want to develop as a performer or poet? Silence. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a piece called Silence and I would get on stage and I would say, this is called Silence. And I say, this is the hardest poem that I ever had to write. But it's really my favorite. And uh, I almost never share it, but I want to share it with you tonight. Anyway, I do that for a while. Oh, wow. Like I mess with people. I just do it for a while. <laughs> you see people will laugh and then they sometimes they'll get emotional. It's weird. Mm. And then sometimes they'll get angry mm. and they'll just start looking at me like this dude, like, what is he doing? Like, you know, mm. but it, it's performance art, you know, kind of. Yeah. But that's still a ploy. It's a poem that I came up with that opens people up but I'm still doing something. Mm. What's I, your want, I want to be able to do nothing. Mm. I really do. I, I, I feel that like, you know, I, I met the Dalai Lama um, at the end of 2019. Mm. And I went to India with a group of people and we stayed at his monastery. Wow. We got a chance to spend a little bit of time with him. Mm -hmm. And um, he started talking to us about compassion. Like that was the first thing he said, you know, he walked into the room and he, he said compassion like that. And then he, he went on and I literally, I didn't even hear the rest of what he said because I was so stuck on the way he said compassion because sometimes it's not what people say or even how they say it, it's who says it. Mm. And he embodied compassion differently than anyone that I had ever been around, or at least that I would registered that in that moment. And um, so I'd like to work on myself, you know, as a human being and get more compassionate and more connected and more loving and forgive myself and other people for perceived things or real things that have happened in the past so that I can be more in the world. And, uh, you know, then it, it won't matter if I, do a poem for five minutes or I just say one word, mm. you know? So that's something I'd like to work on is silence in between the poem, silence in between the words and mm. just allowing things to land without needing to do something because, yeah. you know, whatever. And you're, and you, and you already kind of, I was, that was one of my questions for you. You already sort of do that because there's, there's these, uh, there's a, there's breath in between your words. 
And 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 uh, I was going to ask you if that's a, a conscious thing or just that's how the poetry naturally comes out. You know, like you, you'll you say a few lines and there's like this natural kind of pause and then it'll go on. Not in every piece you do, but uh, it's it's definitely a sl much slower cadence than a typical uh, spoken word artist who try to ram in so many things <laughs> in their three minutes and 10 seconds. I think that's a slam thing though, man. I mean, if I'm being honest, like a lot of, you know, when you get up and you slam, you have to bring energy and emotion mm -hmm. because the, the judges respond from energy and emotion and subject matter. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a, a kind of like a learned thing almost. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't know. And maybe, maybe that does have something to do with hip hop. Like some of my favorite MCs, like Kendrick Lamar, for example, or, yeah. or Nas, I could listen to them do their lyrics without a track and actually like think about a line that they have. Yeah. You know, as they're performing, like uh, give me time to let it land inside of me to think how do I think and feel about this rather than just going right on to the next thing. But it's funny, I don't perceive myself the way that you're describing me. I still mm. feel like I rush pieces a lot or maybe I use silence sometimes, but as I said, it's a tool that's using me rather than me using it. I feel that I could get better at mm. truly trusting the silence and truly trusting the words and truly trusting my audience yeah. without needing to, um, you know, imaginary control them with all my different techniques of yeah. performance, you know? Well, you we know, we've both been around poetry for a long time and um, definitely there's a definitely a uh, a more, if, as a poet, I'm missing the word, uh, a more reserved cadence in not, again, not in all your pieces, but in, in, a, in a lot of your, your pieces, more so than I see with other poets. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I enjoy it. And I think obviously, you know, uh, doing as well as you do, a lot of people enjoy it because they want to take it in. I remember one time I was DJing at a poetry event and the lady uh, got mad at me because I was playing music in between the poets because she wanted to take in, she was older, uh, she wanted to take in all of what the poet, the last poet just said, you know, and I'm like, but I'm trying to entertain the crowd in between because, right. but um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, what are some of your, your, your writing habits, uh, good or bad? You know, I used to write all the time, man. Mm -hmm. And now I just write when I have something to say. Yeah. And I've really just trained myself to pay attention. You mm -hmm. know, people say, Oh, like, how are you so inspired all the time? You know? And I'm like, if you're not inspired by life, you're not paying attention. Yeah. Or you have a different definition of what inspiration is. Mm. I think inspiration has to be rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. You know, there's so much to be inspired by and so much to express if you train uh, your muscle of paying attention. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Uh, any last thing that you would say to uh, an up and coming poet just really trying to... Um, Let's say, let's say even uh, make a living uh, doing something that he's passionate, he or she is passionate about uh, or love, which is writing poetry. Yeah, okay, look, if you wanna make a living in poetry, you've come to the wrong place, my friend. Mm. I'm not saying you can't do it. I believe in you. I don't know you, but I love you and I believe in you. But you don't get into poetry for that. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a genre that has its legs in popular culture in a way where it's easy to monetize. There's no uh, yellow brick road for you to follow. You know, if you're a comedian or you're an actor, it's hard. You know, a musician, it's hard. But you have a road map. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's why when someone like Amanda Gorman gets up and does her incredible piece and captures the imagination of a nation, it's first of all, what a, a beautiful soul to step into that moment with as much power and grace as she had. And it made me really happy for her and proud of her, even though I don't know her. Right. But it also made me happy and proud for poetry. 
Yeah. Because it's another opportunity for us to have a bigger stage where people can say, oh, this is actually not my perception of what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually shifted what I think is possible for the art form. So I would say, first of all, don't get into it for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't choose poetry. Poetry chooses you. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, I would say just explore your voice. Nobody can teach you how to do art. They yeah. could give you tools for you to explore your own truth, a platform for you to explore your own truth, but you're gonna find your voice and your style from doing it, yeah. not from someone telling you about how other people did it. So there is no one in the world like you, there is no one that has experienced what you have experienced and what you have experienced is important and I wanna know. Yeah. I don't want to know who you think you should be or who you think I think you should be. I want to know who you are. And if you stick to who you are and you put in the hours, you will change people's lives from your truth. And I think that's ultimately what we're all doing here. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, do you have a, a writing prompt for our, our guests? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the writing prompt that I always do for my first workshop with people. Um, and by the way, I actually have a, a workshop series coming up. I completely forgot, but it's oh, called yeah. Do You. So if you guys, I'm doing three in March, March 7th, the week after and the week after that. Okay. And uh, we're doing them digitally and they're incredible. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna give you the first prompt from that because not that I'm gonna do on the next one, but the one that I did and the first one, because I feel like uh, it's the fastest way for people to get into their hearts. I want you to choose a moment in your life that changed who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's a moment where you walked in one person and you walked out a completely different human being. It could be good, it could be bad, uh, it could be neutral, but it has to be meaningful. It has to be something that you remember. And it has to be something that is unresolved. Hmm. And uh, it has to be something that you wouldn't talk about normally at a dinner party after like 15 minutes. Mm. You know, you have to dig a little bit. Okay. And, uh, and just explore that through a poem and uh, pretend it to be a, a, a poem and uh, no other rules. Dope, dope. Well, uh, actually, we have some rules here at the Poets Tree. Okay. Um, uh, just for whatever you submit, it has to be a minute or less. Uh, you can write more, but what you're submitting is a minute or less. Uh, and uh, you can either send us a video of you performing it, or you can send in the text, and we will have uh, our, our next guest uh, help me read it. So you would send it to gsotu at the oldglobe.org, gsotu at the oldglobe.org. Once again, you're writing about a moment that changed you when you walked in one person and came out another, something meaningful, something that you have to kind of dig to, to really pull out. That's a, a beautiful prompt, man. Uh, we're going to close with uh, your last poem, if you don't mind. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man. It's yeah. so good to see you again. We both have a little bit of gray now. And <laughs> I was just thinking about this. Like, we've known each other for like 12 years now. Mm -hmm. Man, it's been a minute. We have such a great community. And yeah. we don't see each other as much as we would like to. Yeah. But it's automatic family, man. Yeah. Because we... We went through the trenches together. Yeah. yeah. When you watch someone's work, you know them. Yeah. You know, so I feel like I know you and, and appreciate you, man. So thank you for having me. I appreciate you um, too. What do you want to hear? Do you want to hear anything specific or? What, whatever the spirit is, is telling you to read right now. Oh, wow. I didn't even consider it to be quite honest. Okay, mm. let me see. Uh, I'm just going to do, how about this? I wonder what God's smile looks like. I bet it's infinitely bright that it would light up every corner of my life. 
that it would turn the night into an endless day, that it would stay no matter what I say, no matter if I sin or pray, that it would be so big that it would swallow his entire face and cover up the human race until there's nothing left but grace. I wonder what it looks like. I know it doesn't have a race or gender. There's no place where I can search for it. I guess I'll just remember. So I close my eyes and wander to beyond this world of wonder to a timeless time that's underneath the layers at my center where the prayers that have accumulated over all the years of life are kept inside a formless safe as secrets in the afterlife. I catch it for a split second, then it's gone, vanished like the echo of a song. And once again, I am alone. I am separate cause I'm me, but I'm trapped by being free in that I can't recall the vision that my heart forever sees. So the sadness overwhelms me even though I can't define it. I imagine if I saw the smile longer, I'd be blinded. Still, I wonder what it looks like and if I'll ever find it. Then she walks into the room and I'm reminded. Beautiful, beautiful. Ah, oh, man. Well, once again, thank you, NQ. Thank you to all of our Barks. Uh, if you want to know more about NQ, it's on, on the screen at NQ Life. Uh, make sure you shout him out and uh, tell him uh, how much you enjoyed his performances and just this talk. And I appreciate you so much, brother. Yeah, man, you too. Thank you again for having me. Yeah. Just big love to everybody who spent some time with us. Yeah, peace, peace. Yeah.